interesting mix of things that you can employ. And I've been hinted to a few different things that we might see when we come to Hannah Mora, but we'll save on that. One of those is being hovered right now. Can you guess which? Oh, it's the Zenyata. We're never going to see that happen no, again. Exactly. How did you guess? I don't know. Hidan, fantastic performance last game. Got a 4K. He's just popping off. And as the analyst de de said, there was a fight on Ilios. Blew his ult at the beginning of the fight to initiate it. He managed to get 80% afterwards. It to quote, I believe, Harry, he was mincing people or microwaving them. No, it was Jaws who said that just as we came ah. back in. I was like, did you see what happened off camera there? And yeah. he was like, yeah, he was mincing people, man. I was like, there you Yeah, go. microwaving is what they were saying when they're coming <laughs> in there. I found out on Reddit the other day, actually, that Zenyar doesn't throw the orbs at people. He throws energy from the orbs at people. And I was like, my whole life is a lie. Honestly, if you slow it right down to like 0 0.25 speed and watch, he fires energy at people. I was nah, like, that's okay. whack. It's that's whack, whack. Man. <laughs> It is whack, but it's the truth. <laughs> well, there's no greater truth than HSLB 2 nil up over Bazooka Puppies. As we jump into the third map, Bazooka Puppies on offense first. What's happening with HSL, Des? The usual. Puppies are running their dive with Anna in the mix as well. They've got Sombra on side now, which is interesting in place of the Tracer. I like it. If they can actually get an ult off this time without being killed on the way in. HSL are going for what we spoke about before the map even started. Going for that high ground hold with the Orisa. Problem here is that we've already seen Cranduke uh, going a lot of times and it's getting himself ca um, caught out very quickly and basically die before anyone can do anything. Almost got a third of the point, but they are going to shut down Mede and that means HSL should be able to hold on just fine. That demon was so close. Cranks on that high ground, of course. They move around to the point to contest it because they have a couple of stragglers still there. Ashcroft getting a couple of things to his head as the dance to take out Crandop. The key fragger for HSL with these compositions, and they put him to push them back. Bazooka puppies not really committing fully to that dive. Yeah, this sounds like the craziest thing I think I've ever said. I just want to see the puppies play goats. They're dogs, but play goats, please, because the dive that they've used so far. Crandot goes in a lot by himself and dies. Meta goes off somewhere else as well. Cranks, it took him four minutes to get his blade online in the last fight and actually find a situation to use it. They're relying on that so much, but HSL basically held with this exact comp on Hollywood extremely effectively. And it's already working wonders because Trat's getting picked off before he can make anything happen on this Sombra. Picked off though. He tried to get away using the translocator, but I don't believe it was translocator. Just try and jump away. He had a Hulk pull him back into the range of damage that HSL were able to kill him off. So they just weren't letting him get away. They were cyber bullying him. <laughs> it feels like it, but already at two minutes down, Cranks has got the Vade online, Sarp has got that Nano Boost online. He adds about 10% away from the Transcendence, so when that's up, there's not going to be much to worry about unless they can pick him down. But already he's going in solo. He's going in solo, EMP was there, but it's still going to take out Zeke in the Chaos. They've got a Dragon Blade available for Cranks if he wants to commit to it. Don't know what he's waiting for with this one. They're going to pop the Rally, give everyone a little bit more armor. Here comes a tie from Sardis. Hopefully we'll pick off at least one of these stragglers. They move back, gives them enough time to get the Supercharger out. Cranks nice. going, playing a very dangerous game by charging through it, getting into the range of the explosion and the damage. Crandrock goes in, immediately dies to his but the Dragon Blade's been popped, and here comes the Transcendence, completely negating that Dragon Blade. And there's a DMX meta just dancing around with that D.Va. Not much here that Bazooka Puppies could do. One minute 30 left on the clock. Why didn't Puppies pull the trigger when they got that opening kill? They got on the high ground, they got a kill. They forced them back down the stairs. You saw Orisa on about 20 HP, a couple of other members on sub 25%, and they said, okay, let's go point. That is your prime opportunity with a blade in your hand, and I get it. We want to save it for the next point and use the combo then. But if you're already in this situation where you're down and you desperately need results, pull the blade, cut through the team, guarantee yourself that first point, because now the whole thing is reset, and they're down for those big ults. Self-destruct over the top. HSL using that backwards self-destruct yet again. Cranks finds Tech 3-6 while he was d -met. You've got Crandrop. He's nano-boosted and also committing the primal. So there's a lot of ults committed to this fight. Starting to get dividends. Probably taken out. Ashkov will find Cranks to stun, the slap. It's all there available for the Brigitte. And now he's dueling Crandrop as well as the tire comes in. Sardis looking for something. Won't find it just yet. I believe he's going to get away from that entirely. But look at the dueling coming out from Ashkov. Too much damage. The hack is there to shut it down with an EMP from Zeke. Grounds everyone else, but the frags have come in from Bazooka Puppies. HSL Esports struggling to get the reinforcement. Zidane on the back line, untouched with the shield. Now, finally, they're committing to him, but they haven't shredded through the armor just yet. He's going to go down. <laughs> Bazooka Puppies finally get that cap. Four minutes, 20 to go. Yeah, only 20 seconds in the clock. Like I say, they could have saved themselves all this hassle by just pulling out the blade earlier on and cleansing that point and giving themselves six minutes to go for the second point. HSL, though, going to change things around a little bit themselves. Nice quick rotation from Puppies to get themselves on the point. Won't quite get the third point, but in comes the boost. And a boost. Riding the lightning onto Hadan, forcing out the Transcenders early. There's the resistance from Ashkov on the Pekita. There's the stun out sound barrier being popped by the Puppies. Cranks finds Proby will take him out. Crandolf gets back to safety. Not dying as much as he was doing earlier in the game. But here come the DPS. Zeke and 
Charlie's picking up Tracking Cave as Crank's still going to dance around. Got a Dragon Blade. Don't pop it this time. Save it. You're going to have to use it next fight. As Crown Drop gets cleaned up, so does Tech 3 6. Mm, Crown Drop seems a bit unsure at times exactly who he should be chasing because he spent the whole of that Transcendence watching the Zen, waiting for him to pop out of it. Zen's pretty quick. He will get away from you, and he was back towards spawn by the time he came out of that trance, so he was perfectly safe. I don't know, maybe in that situation, going for another target and helping your team prioritize a certain member down would have been the one. This is what cost them Hollywood, was split focus, not really choosing a target and going for it, burning ults quite randomly as well, and although that wasn't quite the case in that fight, it just feels a bit scattered at the moment from the puppies. Well, like I said, Crank's got that Dragon Blade, won't have an Ana Boost to combo it with, so he's going to have to go in with potentially a Wet Noodle here if he can't land onto anyone. Already being litten down by Don't that Lightning. Dare. The chase is there. Proby's going to find him, take out Crank. So Bazooka Puppies still missing a key component. Now the aggression comes out from HSL. They push Bazooka Puppies back. Not going in too heavy, though, because they know it could be risky. We get a little bit of spray damage off on uh, Sab, knowing full well he can just recall back. I do wish there in that, that Cranks would just try and find a flank, whether it's high ground off to the left, take your pick, instead of just running straight across the point to try and get to the back line and getting dinged out on the way through. HSL have got themselves three ults online. It's the same sort of story for Bazooka Puppies, though. Again, looking towards that combo to come out of them. So I was about to get that Nano Boost online. That Nano Blade could be what they need, but they need to combo it with the EMP coming out of track if they're going to make it work this time because Hidan needs to get shut down before they can really capitalize on that. They can't use that EMP, can't time it correctly. Then Hidan's just going to pop Transcendence. They're locking him in the corner, they're forcing perfect. it early. So now they just need to not lose members here while that Transcendence is up. And now he's been hacked out. Oh, Crank can't hack. use the blade. Sardis going to go down for it. No, he used the translocator the last Beautiful. second. Beautiful. He's going to take him out. HSL knew exactly how to respond to a premature Transcendence forced out on Hidan. They knew how to respond to their own premature one, for sure. Yeah, because Sardis actually, as the Transcendence round out, popped the EMP and caught the Genji because Cranks was the one there looking for that blade to come out and goes, right, Transcendence is down, blade comes out, we win the fight. Guess what? No, there is a hack here. You can't do anything for the next six seconds. We win. End of story. But they still retain the ultimates, though, there. So it's not a total loss. It's just more time being burned through. They have got an EMP. They've got the Nano Boost and the Blades. They can pull off that combo. And they've got to have some confidence that Hadam doesn't have that transcendence just yet. If they meander around this point and buy him time Look to get it out, he's, he's going to be over. Time. Yeah, he's nearly got it. 88%. He's moving around. Self destruct over the top will clear out some space. Blade has been popular, but the Nano <laughs> Boost was committed and the EMP. No. Cranks couldn't pop the Blade. Hadam about to to get the Transcendence himself and get a few more Orb Scheme alive. The Deflect from Cranks won't commit to the damage. He's taken out quite adequately as he's going to have Tech 3-6 on him already. And Hadan now with the Transcendence available again. Clean up as usual. HSL Esports take Bazooka Puppy down to one minute. I'm calling this Sardis Esports for now because he hacked Cranks right at the start there. As he got Nano Boosted but didn't pull the blade out, he hacked him. You are a useless Genji who can do nothing but throw shurikens with a wasted nano boost on you. Beautiful play because twice in a row now, Sardis has shut him down. And Cranks has even said, you know what, enough is enough. Time to change things out. We're going to go Goats and try and see if we can slam dunk this point. Well, you want to take that free real estate. You've got to get onto the Goats. They're going to be able to claim it. Throws out the pulse bomb. Misses out on hitting Saab. Hadan's already taken out track. Sardis going to take Cranks. Nice. Zeke finally gets Saab. And Hadan's just on the high ground. It's like, okay, you can take the low ground. I know I'm safe up here. I'm just going to start firing those orbs or the energy from the orbs onto the point <laughs> and get a couple of kills. Mete backs off, gets Dmet to the last minute. That's so unfortunate. With only 20 seconds remaining, they're just going to let him walk back to the spawn. That might just be the end of the dreams here. The hopes and dreams for puppies is about to die, potentially, to the EMP and the Transcendence coming out of Sardis and Hidan. We've already seen what these two guys can do. And in fact, I put them down as two of the big players for this team today. Stellar performance so far, but there's still one more fight to go. There wasn't enough time for Bazooka Puppies to get the ults generated by switching to the composition so late into the game. They're going to have to force on just winning team fights without them. Stand up Progi, nice protected for Aria, is going to keep him alive. Already someone's going low, Tech 3 6 in the back line. They're going to have to hide behind the shield. A EMP missed timed, unfortunately, but it's still going to be Cranks going down to the explosion. Progi will get the kill. But they're all hacked. There's nothing they can do. Zeke's going to start tearing through them on the Zarya. The charge going to be giving himself another kill and a team kill to finish off the round. Only point A with any capture for the Bazooka Puppies. It was a little bit unfortunate on the hat coming out there. But although the barrier was applied, abilities are still not there. It does mean you are basically sitting health pools for free ult charge, although the barrier I don't believe it contributes. It was just a, it was just a fraction of, of the timing of the EMP not being there with the self-destruct because it didn't drop the shield in time to get the rest of the members, I believe, fortunately. Did manage to take out Cranks on that Brigitte, so you'd already take out one person from the fight. And of course, everyone else is hacked, like you said, Des. There's not much they can do afterwards. 6v5 with no abilities. Well, 
That's like tying both arms behind your back and trying to win a boxing match. It just doesn't work. What it feels like for puppies is they know what they want to do. They want to get the combo out. They want to get the blade out. They want to get the nano boost down. They want to drop tracks EMP onto the whole team and just have cranks sweep through and wipe out the enemy team. Simple. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that HSL are thinking one level further. They're thinking, well, if we can hack Cranks and he can't use his blade, it doesn't matter what AMPs they drop, it doesn't matter where they put the nano boost. If he's hacked out, he can literally do nothing. And you saw it twice, not in that final fight, but in the ones leading up to it. One where they had the big global EMP come out just as he was about to pop blade. The second one, which was tragic for puppies, was when he was nano boosted, couldn't bring the blade out because he was hacked, and the whole thing fell apart from there. So HSL know what their win condition is. And again, Sardis, I'll give a lot of props to him. This time he's on the Brigitte. He's already shown he can be in the right place at the right time on the Sombra. Let's see how he can do on the Brick. And Cranks mixing it up with the Doom Fist. We talked a little bit earlier in the uh, pre-game, or the pre-broadcast, shall we say, desk of talking about how Doom Fist fits into everything nowadays and saying that, well, if you go for a trade with Spawn Advantage, then you're always going to get some value out of it. But Cranks is going to have to do more than just trade. He needs to get that two for one because Spawn Advantage on point eight offense on this map definitely goes to HSL. That's what you're shooting for as well. And don't forget as well, only got to get 33% on that second point and it's their map cleanse the way they can take it on and go into map four, already knowing that the series is in their favor. And already taking the fight towards them as well. Just Zookabob is playing very deep up here, sacrificing the high ground. That just means they can push up as freely as they have right now, take this high ground and start going for the fight. If they can bring down Cranks early on, that threat immediately disappears and they'll be nowhere near as scared as puppies. Cranks already gone. Speaking of threat, Zeke there getting the biotic grenade onto him. He's not got no healing, so he just has to back off. And as doing so, Saab's able to pick up the kill from that. Tech 3-6 taking out Cranks, so they've traded one for one. So Cranks not doing the damage as they get onto the point, but they're still retaining control of the high ground. Going to have Saab jumping down as they fold onto HSL Esports. So they crank up going in, EMP already available for, not EMP, so it's Nano Boost already available for him, so the Lightning's going to be that much stronger. Tech 36 has the self-destruct available, just kiting back, trying to get crammed up away from any source of healing. He pops the Primal Rage, Saab going to take out Progi in the meantime, so one monkey on one team, not one for the other. As Cranks goes in, going to get that Rocket Punch onto his as he moves around and tries to clean up the rest <laughs> of HSL Esports. <laughs> <laughs> Seek was literally chasing cranks across the whole of the outside <laughs> of the point there to make sure he could bring him down. Finally catches him out with the uppercut. But the thing is here for puppies, they got the boost down onto the Winston, but he got nothing done. There was no follow-up damage to help him secure kills. So right now, everything is still in favor of HSL. And finally, they get a traded kill back across, and they've got ultimates online to play with HSL. Bit out of gas here as well, but it did feel that that fight went on for a good minute, 45 seconds. It wasn't decisive. 15, Zeke's going to go back onto the Zarya now. So two minutes, 20 left in the time bank. Going back to the Goats with Progi on the Winston. 87%. Not going to change that back over. They're going to keep that for the Primal Rage track. Scouting out. Hopefully he doesn't get spy checked here. He's in the middle of all. EMP going to knock him all down. They climb into the room. Going for a bit of a Hell and Cell match. Track takes out Ashcroft. Crank's going to find Bogey. As they're getting a few more kills on the board. HSL Esports have to be in full retreat. Charging up the Rocket Punch. Hits the wall instead of committing to the room. Fair play. He didn't have the HP to properly go ham on that one. That's probably the first time I've seen Puppies really pull off an executed attack like that. With just one ultimate on side, they've managed to stall HSL out again for another 45 seconds or so. Because don't forget, it was about 2 minutes 30 when that last fight ended. So that's the kind of stuff we want to see them do again. Now they've got to make a big play work with the Nano Boost. They've got the Korean combo, as we like to call it. The Nano Boost onto the Doofus. He brings out and just murders everyone. Well, Cranks is there. He has oh, the Nano Boost on him. Mete with a double kill on the Progi and Ashcroft. Just trying to get the D-Mech on the Tech 3-6. Seismic Slam track. Beautiful. Clean up again. So I don't know what's going on here, but Bazooka <laughs> Puppies is going to commit. He's going to get back up here. He's going to go try and get the He's tags. Good. They've all jumped off the side of the map. Oops. Yep. Hard to control Doomfist in that 0G with how mobile he is without zero gravity. So he's going to be mixing it up afterwards. But it seems to be a different Bazooka Puppies here. 1 minute 15 on the clock, and they're taking it to HSL Esports. It's looking a lot cleaner. Yeah, they're definitely tying things up. And again, are using basically one or two ultimates in each fight to store this one out. And by thematics and by maths, while they've got three ultimates remaining, there's probably two fights left. This is their the taking if they can make this work. Missing out on the hack as they're moving around the terrain too fast for Track to get in there. Track with the hack, unfortunately not going to have that rhyme coming out for the time being. Zashul goes through the high ground, finding Sab. He's unable to hide in that corner, so they're committed to killing him and Krandoff while well, they have the high ground. Meteor Strike coming in. There's the Seismic Slam. Protective Barrier keeps them from getting full comboed by the Doomfist as HSL translates onto the point. Space, what you're relying on the Zarya for there is blocking out the effect of that Doomfist coming through. And Krank's gone down there as well in the final dying seconds, but that point is going back across. 30 seconds remaining for Similar HSL. Point yeah, it's getting very close as well. It was about 10 seconds sooner than what Bazooka Puppies did it in. The big difference here is their ultimates. They've got five online, and there's no transcendence on the other side here to stop the combo that no doubt is about to come out of HSL. Well, unless Meta decides he wants to be a hungry, hungry hippo and eat that grab coming out from Zeke. 
I mean, we saw that in the first on Ilios. Just basically stood there instead and went, yep, I'm going to farm, I'm going to press Q now. And he didn't eat it. Yeah, but we saw how good he was at doing it in World Cup. Here comes the EMP from Track. And Crank goes in with a rocket punch already onto Progi. So first fight on point B. It's just going to go over to Bazooka Puppies in a very clean and controlled manner. And funnily enough, we were saying that about HSL on map two. Hmm. Trill's still on side, though. They've got enough here to play with two defensive... Well, you can't really call... Uh, Nano boost a defensive all I guess. It is on a support, but it's pretty aggressive. HSL are going for the full six stack, and this is what I like. They've kind of said, right, we've got four minutes to play with. We know that our win condition is when we have all these ultimates online. It'll be very hard for them to stop us. Let's take our time, stack these up, and then go for the play. So they're waiting for Sardis here to get that ultimate online. He's about to hit it. This should end in the next 30 seconds or so, Trin, unless Bazooka Puppies can pull off a miracle. Already committing with the Nano Boost. You see Cracks going in. He's hypercharged. Wants to get those kills. Ooh. They're backing out. They're just going to wait out the duration of the Nano Boost. Heal everyone up. Tech 3 6 going very low. Heal him. Yeah, I don't know where the healing is. Purple. There you go, finally going over. Waiting for the cooldown from Hidan probably to get an orb. They knew they were safe and had the time to wait for it. Track moving around from the side behind him. Wants to get in there. Hasn't got an EMP, but does have a hack. Self-destruct over the top. They're all going to hide into the side room. Zeke's there, ready with that Graviton Surge. Standing right behind his monkey. Keeping that where Meta is. He doesn't want to fire it into the mouth of the defense matrix. The, the kill. Cranks goes in. Graviton nice. Surge solo grab onto him, but they're not killing him. He's now going to burn for him. Finally, Asadis goes in with a stun. Self-destruct over the top. Finds Crown Drop. There's a d neck on the Mete. Doesn't even need to worry. He doesn't have to self-destruct. He doesn't have the Graviton Surge to be eaten by a mech that he no longer has. Progi, no healing available to him, but he's all about dealing that damage rather nice. than surviving. And well, hello, HSL taking their first series win of Contenders Season 3. It's like we said, getting that six look critical mass was what they were riding on, and you saw exactly how it played out. Wasn't quite sure I was expecting them to burn the Graviton Surge just for the Doomfist. No, 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 you want to get Doomfist out of the way. Just exactly. solo grab him and done. But they were they did really think to themselves, yes. the realistic threat here is either an EMP out of track, or it's going to be the Doomfist melting us from the bat line. So if you can get rid of one of those two, well, suddenly your risk is cut in half, and it's a pretty decisive clean fight after that. HSL, once again, looking very strong. Mm -hmm. Well, if you remember Contenders Rules, just because they've won the series doesn't mean that they are not going to play out that fourth map because we see what happens when we go over to week five of the group stage. That map difference really does matter. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to see if this is going to be a four overwatch or whether it's going to be a free one hiding by HSL.
from control to hybrid to assault and finally to payload. That's how we work in contenders for map rotation. And we're going to find out what that map is very shortly. But there's, we already know, HSL picking up the first series win for this team in contenders. Got to be a great start to know you've got at least one win on the board. And it was quite decisive as well. You kind of got the... Th shaky on map three, though. Let's not... Mm, would, would you say shaky? Point A offense to be taken down to 30 seconds and mm. looking quite weak against the coordinated bazooka puppies. I don't know. I'm just saying, decisive first half, I will completely back you on that one. Mm. When it comes to the second half, more fight coming mm. out from the puppies. They showed their teeth. Maybe. You're welcome to your opinion. I'm not saying it's right, but we'll <laughs> say you've got an opinion. I thought <laughs> you, <laughs> such a cop. You've got an opinion. I respect that, <laughs> but I disagree. With no, you're it. not even going to have. You're not, you're not even going to have the butt there to disagree. Mm, no, no. I thought it was pretty clean. Like you do see this happen sometimes. It takes two or three fights to really crack it. You're looking for a crucial alt combo to come online before you go for the big break. And just like on second point, they waited for all six alts to come online before they went for the big push. But the first half was definitely more decisive. Like you say, it was a one push wonder on Hollywood. First map uh, map was two uh, points on Ilios. All pretty decisive, all yeah. in. So HSL, I think Ryan got the 4-0 here as well. They're looking to have a nice, strong start. Um, I think the Puppies, again, they've definitely warmed up on that last map. There were moments on that first point where they did have some nice defensive fights. And on the second point, actually, where they did have one ult, one ult being used at a time to kind of create the situation where they could win. But it wasn't enough, ultimately, to close the entire map out. But going on to Dorado, haven't seen this for a while. Haven't. It's going to be quite good. Well, mind you, we saw it in World Cup because we had, like, basically, you can pick any map you want. Nobody cares. Just do what you want, right? But now HSL, they're going to be on defense first on Dorado. Having some change-ups from Bazooka Puppies already committing to the classic Goats v. Goats matchup. Difference being, they have Saab on that Zenyata to shred through the tanks. Yeah, and Hidan this time around, like you say, isn't actually on the Zen himself. He's playing on the Moira, and we haven't seen this Goats in quite a while. This is always a more defensive style, the sort of thing that you'll see in North America, where you're playing for the points, as they tend to say. Whereas the Zen is the kind of thing where you stick the Discord orb on the bat line and basically just say, go get him, and everyone dives into that bat line immediately. The thing is, in fights like this, is you will melt through them a lot quicker, as you're pretty much seeing now. They're melting through them with that Zen on side. It's going to be an easy cleanup for Bazooka Puppies, and I have no doubt that HSL Esports probably won't commit to this. I think Hadan, even though he will have a coalescence able up, uh, enabled for the next fight, I have a feeling he's going to change it up because you're just going to be giving it away ultimately because you're going to be going into that Zenyata in a Goats v Goats matchup. And there you go, Hadan throwing away away. Well, you say ultimately as well. Speaking about ultimates, Ooh. look at Puppies. They've almost got a full bar once again. Track the only one who's kind of lagging behind at least a little bit. On the other side, there's one ult to play with. And this is why if you have the option to change early, you go and change before you commit to a fight that you're probably going to lose just off of hero picks. The HSL Esports going to commit with this. They have got a grab from Zeke while Track's still growing it up. Nice what? block from Pro you to shut down the Earth Shatter. Ultimate available from eaten. Zeke. Got eaten up by Meta. So it's nice to see him back on form. Ult advantage in favor of Bazooka Puppies, but the fight just being pushed around. They threw down the Earth Shatter there from Progia. I don't believe it hit anyone. Transcendence comes out from Saab, pushing people back to the side and taking control of the point as he finally takes down Progia. With no main tank, the rest of his team is going to crumble backwards. Mate has the self-destruct. Won't need to use it in this fight. His track, same story there with that Graviton Surge. But HSL Esports are forcing the fight back. Crown Drop and nice Pranks bit. have gone down. Track taking out Ashcroft so they don't have that extra mobility. Graviton Ooh, Surge going to pull together. Aggressive. One support, two support. Hedan there with the Transcendence. There's no shield. Progia getting position to block out the self-destruct he manages to do it hsl esports dig their heels in just by the fountain mm, clutching at straws a bit there i felt poppies they were only four members down they'd lost a couple don't know a bit forced but mm -hmm. alas hsl find themselves in a good spot to be able to adapt burning only one of themselves and now comes the counter you called out a combo this is a combo self-destruct from tech 36 to take out cave and track and the rest are gonna crumble by the wayside hsl esports Showing Bazooka Puppies how you do a grav combo, Des. Much, much better. And this is what happens when you wait for all your members to be nearby. So you can capitalize on the Graviton Surge. You can capitalize on the space that gets made by the self-destruct. Or even find yourself a couple of picks because Brigitte can get in there and get the stun down onto that shield in the front line. They did burn quite a bit for it, but they still got the Earth Shutter and the Sound Barrier online to play with. For themselves. On the side of Bazooka Puppy, he's going to have himself to rally. Before the fight, you can see Saab building up that armor already, retaining itself. Oh, Destruct nice. knocks them all down. Transcendence is there. They just have the rally and the Earth Shatter of their own crown drop. Only finding one member, but the sound barrier is good from HSL to keep him alive. Grab being eaten again by Meta. No, it went through. How can you slot through that gap and miss the payload and the stalls? Get him under the bridge as Sardis and Progi. And then Zeke going to get some kills. He threaded that through the needle. I couldn't even see where it landed. And that was the second combo 
saw, but the first combo was probably being off to the side with the Brigitte as well. Sardis basically stunned and immediately from outside, just inside the little doorway, Shatter came through and cleared down three members. So, good little sneak attack there coming out of the Shield Bros, as you might want to call them. On shield the other side, bros. though, yeah, Zooka Puppies, they're playing with just one ultimate here. Maybe two or three if you look towards the sound barrier and that Graviton Surge of their own. But Hidan has got hold of that Transcendence, and we've already seen what this guy can do this series. He should be able to keep them pretty safe. He's got great timing with the use of Transcendence, even when it's forced out, the team knows how Final to play fight. around it as well. 10 seconds remaining, taking the stairs, rather than going under that chokehold tunnel. Rally being popped, top everyone up with armor. Sardis giving HSL the good, good as they Sardis. move forward. Sardis is going for this stun. Still going to find the damage to get the kill. Cranks will go down, Sandbarrow comes out, Graviton pulls them together. They have a shield to protect this one. The charge moves the shield away. It's meant to find the double onto Progi and Zeke. They couldn't defend it because the CC was too good for Mizuka Puppies, but hit down and Tech 3 6 coming back at him with frags of their own. Crandon, Sam, they're going to drop down. Self destruct goes up high as a down. Finds another one on the back line. He takes out track. The defensive hold is there for HSL Esports. They're going to end the puppy's journey right now. Pretty much done and dusted there. A lot of it on the back of a down, getting a few of those final kills. Nice and decisive. And now, puppies, they've got to do a hold to this exact place in market. They've got four minutes to do it. It's a I yikes for me, you. dog. It's a yikes for me. I won't lie to you. It doesn't sound particularly. Possible, should we say? <laughs> Stranger things have happened. I believe that there is still a possible reality where Bazooka Puppies get this hold off for the four minutes. They stop them just shy of the bridge and fight around that choke and don't get run over. It's entirely possible, but I will agree with you, Des. It is an unlikely scenario. But let's hope the Bazooka Puppies can get in there and get at least one map win so they don't go home empty handed today. The one thing I feel will catch up with HSL in future weeks is in instances like there when they went to try and get off the shadow combo with Progi and Sardis getting the stun, Sardis missed and caught Krunks in, uh, Cranks instead. And therefore, the fact that the shield didn't go down on the other side meant that for Crandop, he could continue walking forward and swinging away. But they still managed to get the kills at the back of it as well. So for HSL, it wasn't a problem. My biggest concern is that when HSL come up against opponents who know how to punish things like that in future weeks, you'll find it biting them a little bit. Let's not talk about it, Trid. Uh, no, no, I think we should talk about it. I know <laughs> it's probably a debate, but... They're on, they're on attack. We don't know yet. They're, well, HSL are on attack. They could go for the pirate ship option. We are, of course, talking about Zeke on the Bastion. We've seen it happen quite a few times across the contender seasons. I'm not going to dive much, too much deeper into it. I'm just saying, <laughs> keep it open. Keep your mind open, Des. Have you seen Morningstar's uh, reveal video they did earlier on today? No. <laughs> it has Casper in there, and he says, favorite hero, Bastion. Oh, of course it was. <laughs> after the shenanigans he pulled in that old Listen Hungry matchup against British Hurricane last season, where he's going for some rocket jumps. But of course, we now have a hero that can do that herself. as Coach Gun Ash maybe see her in later seasons of contenders. But HSL Esports moving around, not going for the Bastion. Going to switch for the Goats, and they've got themselves a Zenyatta this time. Around. Both sides have actually gone for the Winston variant where you've got that high ground control. You can see exactly why it's because a lot of these duels will take place on the high ground to begin with. You don't want to give the defensive side all that room. But once again, this has been the recurrent throughout the whole series. It's Crandall getting far too close to the front line alone. He doesn't have the backup from his team and gets melted He's out very quickly. They now don't have a main tank. He's getting hard focus. Discord Orb and the Brigitte right there in his face to take him out early. Zeke going over, following up onto Saad. The rest of the Bazooka Puppies have been wiped. No one's close to any ultimate crown drop. I think for the mobility has gone over to that Wrecking Ball. Got to get in there and try and make it work. And a lot of the players we spoke to said we're not really going to be playing much Wrecking Ball this season. But even seeing the Widowmaker come out of here as well. Probably more standard, you say, seeing the Widowmaker on first point. Takes position on the gate and goes from there. But already there's only one meter remaining. Literally as soon as they step away, which they already have, it's over and done with. <laughs> Twice today. <laughs> Four, right, okay, okay, okay. C9 me once. Shame on you. C9 me twice, shame on me. Victory, hate to sell esports. We already knew it was the case, but it's a 4 0. Oh. Two C9s in one series, not what you want to be doing here with your bazooka puppies, but ultimately I feel the momentum going forward with that for HSL. Even if they didn't step off the point, I think the outcome was pretty much sealed at that point for that particular map. And of course, the series was already sealed by Horizon Lunar Colony. So HSL Esports cement their first 4-0 of contenders and going to be moving forward into next week. I wonder who they're going to be playing up against, but hopefully. They're going to have run up against a little bit more resistance and Bazooka Puppies can iron out those creases. That's exactly it, is the resistance point. And it really kind of showed itself, like I mentioned, during the game there when it came to that shadow combo in the market. Mm -hmm. HSL messed it up but still managed to win the fight. Mm -hmm. Against other teams who are more established, who are rehearsed against this kind of thing and know how to prevent it, they will punish you for that. Mm -hmm. And they got a bit of a, not so much a free buy today, but it did feel like a lot of the mistakes they made were not punished by the other side. For Puppies, 
The dive thing looks a bit messy at times. You've got meta going one way, Cranlock going the other way. Maybe try and have a look at that and go back to basics and think, you know what? When in doubt, go to it out because it works for so many teams. Why not? I think the audience ultimately saluted them when they saw the dive <laughs> come out onto Hollywood. It is refreshing because we are used to very tank-heavy compositions here in Europe. But the second half of the map needs breaking down, so we're going to throw it over to our analysts to see what they thought.